Well, hello, and how are you doing? Had a couple of technical issues on my end earlier, which is why I'm a little bit late to the party. It happens. It's not the end of the world. I've got the uh, candles burning. I've got the uh, 150-year-old beeswax heating up and making a nice aroma in my apartment because it is uh, does contain honey, as I've told you probably several times now. And I do believe I was able to get all of my cameras working this evening. I just have to make some slight adjustments here. But it looks like uh, everything is working properly for the first time in quite some time, to be honest with you. I don't quite know what to make of it, and things are working. Now, if I could just load the program, it would be that much better. Uh, there we go. Now it's working out. And let's see here. If we just bring that down a bit, and that up a bit. Oh, that's not good. That's a little bit better, because I have multiple cameras, and uh, let's see here, we'll give you one of the angles, okay, and we'll just blend that into that. You can see uh, less of the broken nose from that camera, and more of the broken nose from this camera. <laughs> if I can get it to transition, there we go, uh, I've got, you can see the entrance to my apartment right there. But let's go back to the main feed, shall we? Okay, so I am very chill this evening. How you doing, Steve? Hope you're doing well. I am... Um, yeah, I'm very relaxed. Um, I, I, I took a nap earlier, to be honest, which is probably why I'm feeling so relaxed. Uh, it wasn't uh, planned. It just kind of worked out that way. You know how sometimes that happens? And, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to say that that worked out. What is going on with my thing here? Here we go. Let's just uh, adjust the camera angle. There, that's better. Although I'm a little bit shiny. Maybe I should put a toque on so that I don't blind you from the glare. And the lights are really dim. <laughs> it's just, there's so much face. Just a second. Okay, that's a little bit better, I think, don't you? A little less of a glare, it doesn't make it look quite as harsh. Maybe I'm wrong, I don't know. I don't know a, a lot of things, There's, it's, it's amazing the amount of things I simply don't know. <laughs> How you doing, uh, Wade? Um, hope you're doing well. Glad to see you're doing good, Steve. I'm, uh, why does that keep going haywire? Something funny with the camera. It's, it's, um, let me just lock it there so it won't do that anymore. For some reason the image has gone off. I don't know what's going on. I hate it when technology doesn't work the way it's supposed to. <laughs> oh, look at that. No, it's just, come on, come on, come on. No, nope, that's not working well at all. Well, um, I'll just throw away all the auto settings and do everything manually because um, it seems to be that's the only way it's going to work. I don't get it. Very, very frustrated. Let me just adjust a few things here and see if we can get that to work. No, nope, it's still blinding white. Let's just lower the light a bit. How's that? I think that's a little bit better there. You know, I do all these checks before I go live, and then when I go live, things inevitably go sideways. I've learned to roll with it. Um, I try not to get upset about it because, quite frankly, you know, there's there's only so much you can do to, to uh, work with the tech, and the tech doesn't always want to work with you. So, <laughs> you know, 
Oh, let's just see if I can fix this here. Bring that down. I'll bring that up. Oh my goodness gracious. Yeah. Yeah, I'm getting funky images from each camera. So I'll just stick with the one we have. Because if I go to this one, you can see that just doesn't look as good. So we'll go back to that one. I'll try this one. What's it doing? It's doing something weird. There we go. Okay, we'll just stick with the one camera so that I can actually concentrate and provide you with some deep, meaningful thoughts. Trying not to get frustrated, so some breathing exercises help, you know. At least I think they do. So, we are approaching the um, latter stages of winter, according to uh, whichever groundhog you follow. We're going to get six more weeks, or we're going to have an early spring. Quite frankly, I predict March 21st to be the first day of spring, because that's when it is. <laughs> I don't believe it's meteorolo meteorolo meteorological. Meteorological? I always have trouble with that word. Meteorological spring, I think, starts a little bit later in Canada, because in Oftentimes in March, we can get a big snowstorm at the beginning or the end and carry into April. But I guess it depends on what part of the world you live in. So, I am very happy to say that soon this warm, sunny weather will be here. Now, I know we just experienced a major deep freeze here. It was uh, minus 47. Let me just adjust this. Minus 47 in Canada's capital on the weekend. And uh, that was very cold. You know, it's funny how, like I said, I adjust all these things before I go live and then things go sideways. I think it's because I'm solo that I put pressure on myself to try and do good job um, when I work in collaboration with someone else I just roll with it you know um, because I'm producing as well as providing content but this is just uh, me doing full production and full content so I guess I put a little bit too much pressure on myself to try and be I don't want to say perfect because perfect is unattainable but uh, better mm, I don't know what word to use there See if I can get my cameras adjusted. There we go. I'll live with that. So yeah, as we fast approach the uh, latter part of winter, we are in the uh, first week of February, which um, here in the city of Ottawa, Canada's capital, is uh, Winterlude, which we celebrate. It's a winter carnival that we celebrate over three weekends in February. Now, opening at night was Friday, and everything was cancelled because it was, you know, minus 47 with the wind chill. Which is about, what, minus 52 to my American friends? Fahrenheit? I haven't used Fahrenheit in so long. They meet at minus 40 and then go the opposite way. Fahrenheit drops faster than Celsius does. Which is strange how that works. Somebody said, my, my brother-in-law said to me, uh, a few weeks ago when I was out visiting, he says, yeah, it's 30 degrees outside. And I went, what are you talking about? 30 degrees? Dude, it's like three. <laughs> like, may maybe five at the most. He's like, no, no, 30. I'm like, are, are you high? It's five degrees Celsius. He goes, yeah, 30 Fahrenheit. I'm like, dude, we live in Canada. I, I haven't used Fahrenheit since 1976. I know body temperature is 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 37 degrees Celsius. At minus 40, they meet. Minus 18 Celsius is zero Fahrenheit. And 72 is about 22 degrees Celsius. That's it. I know nothing beyond that. You tell me 30 degrees, I have no concept of what that means. And I learned both systems, but it's been, you know, 40... Six forty-seven years since I learned the the uh, Fahrenheit system, so I don't I don't remember it at all. Anyway, I'm hoping to get out. 
uh, skiing this weekend, and I'll take in some of the Winterlude sites on Friday evening, as well as Saturday. It's going to be quite mild this weekend, I think. It's going to be about 4 degrees on Saturday, which is a huge swing from minus 47. <laughs> okay, I'm babbling here. I am... Um, Friday, Friday I was... Uh, in a good mood, and uh, during the day, had a good work day, I went over to the pub for a bit, saw some friends, and then uh, I, I was, I got home and I sat down and I, I was in a strange place. Mine kind of wandered to dark, dark corners, and I didn't care for that, so I hopped on the pod for a bit, um, had a couple of laughs, and then... James pulled me because I laughed at a lame joke, so I said, okay, you know what, I'm just going to go and watch for a bit, which I did. And then I uh, went to bed very early Friday, woke up early Saturday morning and had a very productive weekend. I got a lot done and it felt good about that, but the one thing when it is that cold out, you tend not to venture outside if you absolutely don't have to, and as a result, I spent the entire weekend by myself, which isn't really a healthy thing for me because I need the company of others to keep my mental health well. So I have a doctor's appointment on Wednesday and I'll be uh, discussing my augmentation and the medication and, uh, and how things are going. And we'll see what happens. Hopefully. Hopefully the doc gives me good prognosis, but we'll see. You know, he hasn't, uh, I haven't seen him in three years because you know, that whole thing we all went through. But I, uh, yeah, I, the whole weekend I didn't, I didn't have a chance to, uh, to spend time with anybody. And as a result, it, uh, I think it took a little bit of a toll on me. And, uh, you know, I, I work from home on Mondays and Fridays, but I had to go into the office today at nine. So I did get to see some people and have some brief chats. And that does help to lift my spirits. I am... I wouldn't call myself an introvert, um, definitely an extrovert, but there are times when I need, you know, downtime. I just need quiet time away from people because it's too people-y. And I'm sure we can all relate to that. We all have those days, right? Or is it just me? I uh, I love the company of others. I love I love big crowds, but sometimes I need quiet time. And that's usually when the anxiety peaks, right? When the anxiety kicks in, because usually I've not had enough sleep. That's that's when it's like, okay, it's too peopley. I need to go home. I need to go home and be in my quiet, safe space. Go ahead, make fun of me for calling it a safe space, but it is what it is. And when you are going through a terrible, anxious moment, you need to be away from everyone and everything and find some peace and quiet and solitude. At least, that's what works for me. Oh, I'm... Oh, really, my, Mikhail, I didn't know that. You're an introvert. I'm, I'm very much an extrovert. But I do need, you know, I do need downtime, especially, like I said, when, when the anxiety gets to be too much. I have to get away from everyone and everything and just relax. Because it can be a, a little bit too much. And And... You know, the anxiety can be rather debilitating. I've, I've learned to deal with it much better, of course, because I've been dealing with it for a long time, but it can really rob you of, of wonderful moments because you can be out with a group of friends somewhere having a wonderful time, and then all of a sudden that fickle beast just rears its ugly head and decides that um, your good time is over. You're going to suffer from here on out. So, you know, if you're of a certain vintage like myself, you'll try and probably try and tough it out. See how long we can go before we absolutely... So I'm going to adjust this light a bit here. See how long we can go before we absolutely have to call it a day, as the saying goes. Turn on the other light there. That might be a little bit better, eh? Trying to improve things. Um, yeah, that's when the anxiety can really... Kick the living hell out of you. Yeah, I hear you, Wade. It's it's um, 
Yeah. Social butterfly, but sometimes I like to wallow in my own self-misery. My own misery, yeah. My own self... Um, what's the term I'm looking for? Self-pity? I don't do much of that anymore, though, self-pity, to be honest. I think I've, I've learned uh, to not do that because I realized that self-pity is just depression and anxiety um, punching you in the gut. And, you know, people, oh, you're just feeling sorry for yourself. No, I have a mental health challenge is what it is. I've not heard anybody use that term in quite some time. You're feeling sorry for yourself. I don't know if that was ever really a thing, to be honest. I say that because we've learned about anxiety and depression as a society, and it makes me call into question whether feeling sorry for oneself was ever really a real thing. I think it was more a question of just a mental health issue, a mental health episode, losing control of one's abilities to reason because you don't know what's going on in your own brain. You don't realize that you're suffering from depression or sometimes anxiety. And those two things can really mess with your head. Having the knowledge and the understanding of what you're going through can make a tremendous difference when you realize that, yes, I am suffering an anxious moment or an anxious episode or a panic attack, if you like to call it. Knowing what you're going through is, I wouldn't say half the battle, but it, it, it certainly does um, give you armament to fight back because you understand what's happening to you. You might not understand why. I don't think any of us really do. Why does it happen like that? Why do I feel that way? Why? Why? <laughs> it's as simple as that, right? Why does my brain not want to behave in a manner that I need it to behave? Why do my brain chemicals have to be so troublesome and, and trying? Why? Why? Why indeed? <clears throat> Let's just lower the intensity of that light. There we go. That's a little bit better. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, Elaine. That two months, but you have to think... Well, let me rephrase that. Try and think of it as um, two months you've journeyed forward, two months you have that you may not have had otherwise, right? Two months t uh, closer to the end goal of being healthy and happy again. I know, I know you're happy, of course, but to be truly healthy so you don't have to worry about the things that you worry about. But I've no doubt that it probably gave you a terrible, um, some terrible moments today, um, thinking of that. It's, it's a traumatic event, and trauma affects us in ways we're only really beginning to learn about now. It sticks with you forever. Um, and it can change your life for the worse. I don't know if it can ever change it for the better, but it certainly will augment how you approach things in the future. Dealing with trauma is difficult for everyone, but it's something we must do because it affects every aspect of our lives. And if somebody says, well, I've never had any trauma in my life, they're lying to themselves. Everybody's had a traumatic moment at one point in time. And oftentimes it's childhood-induced trauma that is, is something that affects our entire lives. And I've seen it happen to people. Um, I was going to cite an example, but I think it cuts too close to home for people who may be listening, so I'm not going to cite the example I had in mind. This is all stream of consciousness. You see, I don't have anything written down. I have no notes. I have no nothing to read, it's just me rambling, talking about things that affect me and, and how, how it makes life, um, 
how it can make life difficult and how I've learned to try and make life better by learning to cope and deal. Something in my eye. Sorry, I hate to do that on camera, but there we go. A little bit of dirt. It's, um... It can be very difficult at times, you know, when you realize that a traumatic event in your life at a, at a younger stage has affected the path that you walked from that moment on. You may have been heading down one path and then you were diverted by a traumatic event of some type. And everybody's trauma is their own. What you may perceive as a non-traumatic event for you could be horribly traumatic for somebody else. Your pain and your suffering is yours. And you're allowed to feel the emotions that are generated by that pain and suffering. And you should feel them. You should also deal with them if you can. If you can, I'm not telling you how to live your life or what to do. But if you can deal with trauma, if you can deal with traumatic events, if you can have a, someone to speak to therapeutically, of course, maybe medication, your doctor. Most people do have doctors, I believe. I'd like to think anyway. And if you don't, you can always go to a clinic and find a doctor to, to, to talk to and say, listen, here's what I'm, here's what I'm going through. Here's, here's how I'm feeling. And I need to feel better because I can't cope like this. This is no way to live. And life is, life is so short and, and precious and it can be gone in the blink of an eye. So trust me when I say this. If you're suffering, please seek help. Please seek help. Because before you know it, years will go by and you'll have missed out on so much. And I'm speaking from experience. And I can't change the past. And I'm not going to get upset by it. Everything in my life has brought me to where I am now. What is going on? Very strange. Everything in my life has brought me to where I am right now, this moment, this time, this place, where I am, how I am, and how I behave. And because of that, I wouldn't change any of it. And I'm not going to get upset by things I can't change and things that affected me in negative ways because they've helped me to grow to a certain degree. I wouldn't be who I am without those moments, even though some of them were pretty tough. All I can do is move forward knowing how to live better, how to be happier, how to live a better life, knowing that the things that have happened in my past have largely shaped me, who I am and how I behave, and I can choose to uh, react or be proactive. And to be proactive means you would seek help when you need it. Talk to people when you can. There are times when you're incapable of talking because, let's face it, when you're suffering a, an anxious episode, a panic attack, an anxiety attack, when you feel that coming on, it's difficult to talk about. And when I'm in a really dark place, going through a depressive episode, it's nearly impossible to talk about. So this is the part of the show when I do the whisper thing for those who so desire. And one of the things I've discovered that um, over time is compartmentalizing can be good, but it can also be bad because if you don't open up that little compartment where you've put that emotion and stored it and deal with it head on, it's going to burst at the seams someday. And when that happens, oh boy, that is not good. It's very, very bad, actually. And the repercussions will be felt for a long time. And, and let's face it, we don't want... Um, we don't want anybody to be suffering. Whoops, just 
friends and family and loved ones to know that we're there for them and that they are there for us. Compartmentalizing can be structurally good at times, but it always has to be dealt with. And if you don't deal with it, like I said, it's it's tough. And would you say Wade is uh, trauma can be dealt with, but the uncertainty of what the future holds in store and how long until the inevitable end to this trauma. Yeah, that's a tough one, man. I don't know how to tell you how to deal with that. I don't have the tools in the toolbox for that. I have more tools than I ever had, but some things I just uh, I simply don't have answers to. <laughs> and as a result, I try and deal with things the best I can. And I will seek advice from others, from professionals when I can, from friends who work in that field who've been able to help me out from time to time. But it's difficult because uh, therapy is only marginally, co well, there is coverage for therapy under OIP, but getting in to see somebody could take years. There's, there's cracks in the system and we need to fill them in. And mental health is something that needs to have a lot of money invested into it so that people can get treatment and be better, more productive members of society. Because at the end of the day, we all want that, don't we? To contribute to our community. Help out our friends and family. I know it's something I certainly want to do. Be a productive member of society. Be able to give back. Be able to help out those who need help. Be able to lend a helping hand. I don't know if if I can do that anytime soon. I mean, I'll continue to do this for as long as I absolutely can. Because I know that it's been helpful to some people. I've had people send me messages and, and tell me how helpful it's been. So I'll continue to do this. And I'm, I'm happy to be able to provide a... Um, an outlet for people to sit back and listen and share if, if you feel the need to share. You don't have to. I, I've been told by a, a few friends that um, they don't share, they don't talk, but they do appreciate that I do because it gives them a sense of comfort knowing that they're not the only ones going through this. And that's what community is. We all understand one another to a degree how we're feeling and what we're going through i mean we each have our own particular trauma we each have our own particular episodes and incidents that created these things for us but truth be told we all we all can identify with the emotion we can all identify with that sense of impending doom that anxiety gives us that dark cloud of depression, what makes you feel isolated and cut off, yet you could be in a room full of people and still feel completely alone. It's tough. And I don't, uh, I don't have answers. I can try and give you the best I can give you, and I'll always do that. But I don't, I don't really have any of the answers, I just have a lot of questions. And nobody seems to have the answers. You know, why Why does my brain work this way? I get that it's a chemical imbalance, and medication can help to balance it out, but there's no fix. There's no cure. Some people I know have been able to take um, antidepressants for a short time period, and boom, they're right back where they, they need to be, and then they can wean themselves off the medication, and they're great. That's not the case for me. I may have to stay on the medication for the rest of my life, and quite frankly, I'm okay with that. I, I'd prefer not to, but, you know, it does wonders for me. It's made a huge difference in my life. And I still have my dark days, and I still have my anxious days, but they're few and far between. They used to be all the time, and now they're only once in a blue moon. Blue moon, get it? Blue, yeah. 
blue moon, blue Monday, blue... Yeah. I was kind of reaching there for a thing. Well, I think we've come to the end of our time today because I'm... Uh, I have some additional projects I have to work on this evening. I have some editing to do and a jazz uh, show to uh, finish and uh, post. And I have to get to work on my uh, pop music show, which will be coming out. Uh, hopefully I can have it done for this weekend, if, if all goes according to plan. But we'll see. So until next time, my friends, um, I will be here. You're very welcome, Wade. I'm happy to share my time. I'll be here next uh, next Monday evening at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time to sit back and chill with you and discuss our mental health together. And I'm happy to share this time with you because if it can help somebody, anyone, anywhere, at any time, it makes me feel a little bit better about myself. You know, the, the most selfish thing you can do is give because you get more than the person receives. I didn't fully understand that for a long time, but now I do. Because this gives me back ten times what I can ever give to you. And I thank you for listening. And I thank you for being here. And uh, I will see you soon. Take care. Bye.